Welcome to the Tip In Maple Leafs podcast. I'm Chad. I'm Dale. On tonight's podcast, it's episode 121. We got more Leafs and COVID protocol. We break down a crazy game between the Leafs and the Avs. Nick Ritchie clears waivers. Still a Leaf, still brutal. We do a little breakdown comparison between Nylander and Marner. We look ahead to the Leafs' month-long road trip. And we got a couple segments in store after the break, so stick around for that. We got hot in the slot and hit the showers. And tip in tips, a.k.a. tits. Tits of the week. Might just be one tit. Might just be one tit, not two. All this and more on tonight's episode 121 of the Tip In Maple Leafs podcast. How you doing today, Dale? Doing all right, Chad. Yourself? Oh, you know, I'm getting yeah. by. I'm let's getting just, by. Let's just say this here. Uh, did a little tease last podcast, our little Thursday nighter, uh, episode 120. <sighs> Can't confirm. Actually, yeah, I can confirm it. We were unable to get a hold of Al's brother's brother. Unable to for this podcast, but it is, it's in the works. So stay tuned in the near future. There will be some type of interview, something going on with Al's brother's yeah, brother. We will get in touch somehow with Al's brother's it brother. It is going to happen. It's going to happen. Not tonight. Not, we got to put it on hold just a little bit, little bit. That's what she said. So the Leafs go into um, the Mile High City, Colorado. They go into Denver, Colorado to take on the Avs and um, lose 5-4 in overtime. Dude, you know what? I was fucking pumped for this game, and I just was like, okay, first of all, Mitch and Engvall, I forgot all about Goose. Or, uh, yeah, I, for, for, I thought Goose already had it. I forgot all about Goose. But uh, so before they take the trip out west to Colorado, we get a little announcement on Friday or whatever it was that Marner and Engvall COVID protocol. So that puts them up to like, I don't know, 17 fucking guys now. You can count the guys who don't have it on one hand at this point. Yeah. And I'm sure by the end of this road trip, they will. So don't worry about that. It's coming. Don't worry. Yeah, but, uh, I bet the rest of them will get it in Las Vegas. 100%. 100%. They probably already have it now. So it's coming. Yeah, but, it's uh, definitely it's definitely coming. But. That is what she said. But you know what? Like, I was I was pumped for this game regardless because Mitch, yeah, had, been out. Mitch had missed like six games and then he came back and whatever. Like, he just – we'll get into a little Mitch Marner discussion later, Willie Nylander <clears throat> comparison and all that. Little bone to pick with Mitchy boy, just a little bit, just a little bone. But uh, anyway, so no Marner, no Engvall. They go into Colorado. Colorado's fully healthy. You know, the Leafs still had, I thought, a decent enough lineup. Knew this game was going to be a tough game. Colorado's been cooking. They won ten in a fucking row at home, right? Yeah, ten in a row. They're they're a lot like the Leafs. Are their records? The records are the same, or they were the same. Almost identical. Almost identical. Literally. Two of the best teams in the league, and Colorado can score, man. Oh, dude. Like, they fly offensively. Their defense, like, gets into the play, gets into the rush. That Kale McCarr, oh, my God. Dude, the Landis guy. Landis Gog, McKinnon, and Brantonen, best line in in hockey, in my personal opinion. Can you name a better line in the NHL than than that? No, they are – it, it, it was so fun to watch. And also, we should point out fans in the stands. So oh, yeah. it's great that, made it, that. that made it a lot better. Maybe that's why I was so, like, it's been over two weeks since we I've seen a game with fucking fans. Maybe that's why I was excited. It's been the over fans. a month, man, since you've seen a Leaf game with... Uh, oh, well, It's been yeah. almost a month since we've seen a Leaf game with people in the stands. It wasn't since December 14th. Right, right. Yeah, I know. That's crazy. So, yeah, like, so the fans, you know, being in the... In the in attendance and playing Colorado. I was like, I was just excited for this game. I wanted to see like, okay, what's going to happen here. Are they going to go in here and get smoked by a really good team? Or are they going to show up and see how they play against like the big boys, right? Basically like the a possible Stanley cup winner, the Colorado, Colorado, Colorado yeah. avalanche. But uh, anyway, so we get going here and I was like, right out of the gates, the Leafs looked fucking awesome. Matthews, Flying. Matthews ends up getting two goals in this game, but even when it was zero zero, he was just buzzing from the opening face up. I, like he looked like on a mission, and I could tell right away. I'm like, oh, he's gonna something's gonna happen tonight. He was like, he was just he seems, out there. he seems to always get up for those games, man. Like anytime it's head to head, everyone's talking Matthews versus McKinnon, you know, 
Colorado versus Toronto. He gets up for those games, and you're right. He was just flying. Like, you could just sense it was coming before it even happened. That's what she said. You could sense it was coming before it even came. That's what she said. You know? So, and then once it did came, it came quick. He came twice in 30 seconds. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Can't say I haven't been there before. No, well, twice, that's tough to do, man. That is real tough. He came, and then he came again immediately after. I know. I know. Hard to do. Takes a special fucking player to do that, man. Yeah. Special. But And uh, and then we should point out that he didn't quite get it off, but he almost came a third time a minute later with a wrap-up. Because he came came twice so quick, he couldn't come again. He couldn't get – No, for the rest rest of the game, he was done. It was done. It was, it was done. done. So anyway, so Mitch and Engvall end up staying in Toronto. They would not have flown out for this road trip because five days starting Friday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So maybe they'll join them at the end of the trip. Who fucking knows? But uh, anyway, so I'm thinking going into this game, like this is maybe why they look so good because they look great in the third period. We'll get to it all falling to part, uh, falling apart and going to shit, burn the fucking house down as we get to the third period. But the first period, they look great. So I'm thinking, you know what? They got Vegas on Tuesday. Maybe we're looking at a little situation where it's like, all right, boys, you want to spend Saturday night, like fly out right after the game to Vegas. Don't practice again until Monday. Get a couple days off in Vegas. Like go out, put in a, you know, good effort. Get a good win. It's Jack Campbell's birthday today. Shout out, Jackie boy. Happy 30th birthday to our boy, Jack Happy Campbell. Happy birthday, Jack Campbell. Wayne Campbell, party on, Wayne. I'm sure he's tying one on right now. Oh, I don't know. He was pissed after the game last night. But look, man, so I'm thinking maybe we got a little bit of a like Las Vegas fever, let's call it. <laughs> like, Forget the Florona cooking around. We got a little Las Vegas fever in the lease yeah. locker room. Can't wait to get to Vegas. And it started off good. It was looking promising. And then poof, up in fucking smoke she went. Wow. <laughs> it was, I thought... I mean, yeah, the first period they were flying. We go into the second period. I mean, Colorado scored at the end of the first period, like right at the end of the first period. Yeah, You get out of that first period up 3 nothing. it's yeah. a totally different game. But you gave them just a little bit of life. And this team, you give that Colorado just a sniff, yeah. they're going to be buzzing around it all yeah, day. Yeah, you can't give those guys a sniff. No, God, no, 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 no. God, no. So you, curve- keep, you keep them far away. So former former Colorado Avalanche Alexander Kerf- Kerfoot was playing on the top line with the Brunt and Matthews in this game, and he gets a little two on one with Bunting and he buries it for the first goal. And so Kerfoot scores first, and then Matthews scores boom boom, uh, fourteen minute mark or fifteen minute mark of the first period. So three nothing, and then they get a late one McKinnon rips it home. Campbell, like I think Colorado had maybe 10 or so shots in the, in the first period. Campbell looked fucking sharp and he looked sharp for most of the night. Jack did, but uh, what's his name? Whoever the fucking Kemper, I think Darcy Kemper. Kemper. Yeah. He gets, he lets in three on, on like nine shots. He gets the yank and in comes Francie. Oh, <laughs> I don't even know the guy's name. Francois. <laughs> what's his fucking name? How about Francois? No, that's not his fucking name. No, it's it Francou. Frank I don't Cous? fucking know. Anyway, F R A N C O U Z. Okay, whatever. Let's call him Pavel. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Kemper gets pulled. Pavel yeah. comes in. Kemper gets the yank, and he probably loved that. And uh, <laughs> like, yeah, Freddie for a, whatever. Like, what did you say? Is Pavel whatever is Pavel Fran- Pavel Francou. Okay. So or Francois. Let's just call him fucking uh, Pavel. Okay. Okay. So he, 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 let's call, let's call like, him P- PF. like, like our boy Hutch, shout out Hutch. He catches with his, with his right mid, eh? Yep. So I'm not a big fan of those, those guys, just like Darren Poopa <laughs> used to catch with his right mid, right? He did. Yeah. You want to tell a quick Darren Poopa story right now or no? Yeah. Darren Poopa was supposed to come on our <laughs> show and then he just ghosted us. Yeah. If anyone knows Darren okay. Poopa out there, it's, <laughs> It's pronounced Francu. Ready, Francu. Pavel Francu. Oh, okay, right. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, all right. So three-one going into the second period, and then here we fucking go. 
Big Dick Nick, let's call him. <laughs> let's call him Big Dick Nick Ritchie, okay? He clears waivers. No one around the NHL is interested in picking up old Nick Ritchie off of waivers. So he clears, gets sent to the taxi squad, thought maybe we won't see Nicky boy for a big, for a while, big dick Nick. But all of a sudden, Mitch has COVID and Pierre Goose, our buddy Goose, Pierre Anglo has COVID. So Nick is just right back in the fucking lineup. Actually, let's put him on the third fucking line. The guy that was just on waivers. Fuck the fourth line. Let's put him right on the third line because he deserves that much. And, and not even that. When we, our second power play unit's been buzzing, let's fucking throw Richie on there too. Let's throw Nick Richie back on the set, just on waivers. Just maybe we're going to lose him to another team. Let's put him on the second power play unit. And they did that. And guess what fucking happened? He scores the fourth Leafs goal on the power play. All the work was done by Wayne Simmons in front of the net. Wayne Simmons did an incredible job to get that puck over to Richie. And Big Dick Nick just flicked it right into the fucking net for his second goal of the season to put the Leafs up 4-1. And that was, they peaked right there. Right at that Richie goal was the peak of the Leafs night. And then it was all fucking downhill from there. That's so true. (laughs) It's so true. But they were loving Nick's goal, eh? Like, big dick Nick. He goes to the bench, and he's, like, getting all the high fives, and they're just loving it. Like, and, oh, my God. Well, not the last time you're going to hear about Nick Ritchie on this podcast because that penalty he took with two minutes left, my God, man. My fucking God. But, uh, so what would you think of that? Like, were you doing cartwheels around the living room when Nick Ritchie scored? No, I, I just thought, like, that's – it's just such a – uh, I don't want to say a leaf thing, but kind of, kind of, it's just such a leaf thing or a Nick Ritchie thing. The way things have been going, like you knew he was something was going to happen with him that game after being on waivers, whether he was going to take a stupid penalty or get into a fight or score a goal, and he did two of the three two, of those. Two out of those. We got a meatloaf on this one. Two out of so three. Two out of three ain't bad, but you knew something. You knew he was going to make some sort of storyline in this game, and he did. It's just the way it goes. I mean, you're on waivers he had a chance to do something other than those two things. I didn't really notice them. No, it could have been, it could have been, it could have been a promising night for Nick. If it just ended with that four, one power play goal, but he had to first. Okay. okay. Well, we'll get to the penalty here when it gets to that time. So it's four, one Leafs, And then that it just fucking blows up in their face. Kale McCarr scores late in the, in the second and it's uh four, two. And then we go to the third, and it's just like a fucking avalanche, a Colorado avalanche attack. Like, Jack Campbell makes this ridiculous fucking save. I don't know if they were on the power play at that time or not. but They were, yeah. Fucking, Colorado he, was on the power. That was the sa- that may be the save of the year or he does a, a highlight of the year for sure. Jackie Boy does a full fucking baseball like he's stealing second base, like he's sliding into second base, and he just fucking rips the puck out of the air. Incredible fucking save. Did you see Kadri behind, like standing at the side of the net? Yes, I did. Oh, it was so great. Couldn't believe he it. Couldn't puts believe his it. hands up on his head. He's just yeah. like, what the fuck was that? Yeah. Unbelievable. So, so without Jackie Boy. And then at the end of the game, he's blaming himself. Well, it was, without, it was all with, his fault. Without Wayne Campbell, they would have lost this fucking game in regulation. You let's bet be, your ass they would have. Let's be serious here. So anyway, Landeskog, it was all Colorado in the third. Landeskog scores to make it 4-3. And you could just tell at this fucking time where the, where this was heading. Like, once they started coming back, it was fucking over. Um, I don't know, JT Comfer, or fucking, I don't even know who that is, scored the tying goal at like midway through the third. And the Leafs were just in he- full-on hang-on mode at that point just to get it to overtime yeah and they got the point yeah campbell yeah but they blew a four fucking one lead this is the problem man like i don't i'm not no it's not a problem i don't like it they were 17 and oh this season when leading after third this isn't the same this isn't the same team from the the last few years leaf fans do this they blow a lead and everyone falls apart and everyone's like they're not god oh god this was one of the Highest scoring teams in the league. The Leafs haven't played a game like this in a month, you know, with fans in the stands and up for the game. They're also at an altitude where, like, you are gassed by the third period. Okay. And they managed to get a point, and they managed to get out of there. They had a 4-1 lead. They should have won this game. You're right. A lot of excuses there. A lot of excuses there. A lot of excuses. But this isn't – I don't think this is – 
the sky is falling. This isn't no, the 2019 not. Maple Leafs again no. where they can't hold a lead. No. You play this game in Toronto with fans in the building on a normal Thursday night, they they shut it down and they I, win that game. But it just didn't it didn't work out for them last night. No, and and like you just said there, like it's not the same Leafs team of old, but it did look a little bit like that last night. That's all I'm no, saying. Not to me, man. Uh, that's how I saw it. I People, saw a team that just looked gassed. I I see. I saw a team with without their goaltender in net. They would have got their fucking asses handed. To yeah, them. no, for sure. Jack Campbell was was a star, but I just saw a team that came out, gave it all they had, and then emptied like their tank was empty by the second period, and they just hung on. What happened before? Back in the day, was it was a different story. They take a four one lead, and then they would just be night night like you didn't know what they were doing out there but yeah it was different this time around plus give colorado credit oh yeah no for for sure they they could have been like oh fuck we'll see you tomorrow but they didn't no you're right they kept coming and coming and coming so we go to overtime it's tied it's tied four four it goes to overtime and uh the leafs eh, i don't know like i don't know did matthews like get caught out there for too long he was on the whole over the whole overtime shift Okay, but, uh, here, here's my thing about the overtime. I understand. I understand you want to, like, the Matthews d lander I, I want Matthews out there. Do, don't get me wrong, but. Sorry, sorry, just before you say that, overtime only, it was it only lasted like a minute. They scored at the 112 mark of the, of the overtime. But Matthews was out the whole 112. Yeah, Matthews, Riley, and Nylander started the overtime for the Leafs. Yeah. But I think if if it's me, it's so easy to change when you have the puck in three on three the most important thing in a three on three overtime is winning that first face off i'm gonna put out my best face off person whoever is like well who's that okay i was gonna talk about this who's that though we, i don't know they're all well, i mean I, yeah, I know who it is they're killing it is well is last it, night it was camp then you put like i was gonna say whoever it was last night I look at it and I'm like, okay. Win the draw, go to the bench. Win the draw, get the puck to Riley, go to the bench, get Matthews out. If you lose that faceoff, it is so hard to get the puck back. Did they lose three. the? Did they lose the draw? They lost the that faceoff. Campbell made a save. They lost the next faceoff, and I'm like, so just, Matthews both times. Yeah, and I'm like, just put. I thought it was Spezza who had the highest percentage last night, but if it's Camp, I'm pretty sure it was Camp. They were talking about Camp all like a lot last night. Put just, Camp look, out it, there, win the draw, give the puck to Riley, give it to Nylander, get the hell off the ice, get Matthews out there. But then you have possession. That's all you want in overtime, man. Get possession. Three on okay. three is ridiculous. That that's fair. Um, so I don't even know if the Leafs got to change it. I think they did. Nylander went off because uh, I saw Tavares and Matthews were out there when when they scored. But uh, anyway. Like one t- a minute twelve into overtime isn't like a crazy long shift for Austin Matthews. Like it's not, it, but it is in well the way everyone talks about playing in Colorado. They're like a yeah. minute twelve in Colorado is like a two minute shift anywhere else. Okay, fair, fair enough. Anyway, Colorado scores uh, right through the old fucking five hole on yeah, Jackie no, Boy. That, Campbell probably wanted that one back, but yep. no one, no one's going to point the finger at Jack Campbell. No, so you know. No, Jack's been the fucking MVP. Just ridiculous here. So they ended up losing 5-4 in overtime. They got a point, like you said. But just to go back to the face-offs for a second. So just dominated. Yeah, they don't the Leafs won 42 face-offs and Colorado won 22, but the Leafs were outshot 49 to 27. So Campbell makes 44 saves in a losing effort, but 50 fucking shots on net. By the Colorado Avalanche in this game, fifty. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Anyway, so it, f- it felt like that, even in the first period. I know we talk about the Leafs were dominating, but the shots on goal were heavily in favor of Colorado, even after that first period. It's just yeah. the way Colorado plays. They just, man, they're so much fun to watch. I mean, um, yeah. Dude, like great, they're legit. Like, team. They are you legit. Know, like, does the West go through them? Minnesota's dipped a bit here. Like, they've kind of got back to like St. Louis is St. Louis. gonna do it with uh Kemper and Francu. Well, that's looks like their plan. I'm sorry, but you have an amazing team. But that if they don't upgrade their goaltending they, at the deadline, they, they won't they get are, through three they rounds. They are blowing a fucking up. They're just blowing another year of McKinnon. Like, I don't know. Get a fucking goalie. Same with the Edmonton Oilers. Get, I know it's easier said than done, but there's guys out there. There's guys out there. Get a fucking goalie. 
Like, absolutely. This team is legit, possibly a goalie away from a Stanley Cup. So, you know, they could bow out because their goaltending is shit in the playoffs. I don't know, man. Like, I would like look to at, think- look at last night. Look at last night. For example, that could be a game seven and Kemper lets in three goals on nine shots. And oh, the difference yeah. is, is the other team. It's over. Just, like, there goes the series right there. There goes the series. You need a goalie. And those just, I don't see, do you see those two goalies as Stanley Cup winners? No, I don't. I don't, but people might say the same thing about Jack Campbell, but he's see, having he's, a, he's having a Vesna like season. I don't right see now. I don't see how you could say the same thing about Jack Campbell at this point. Well, people Look, might say he doesn't have the experience. He's yeah, never that's won fine, anything, but his but, numbers are oh my god, he's like, playing through the ceiling right now. Yeah. He's unbelievable. So But yeah. you're right, get a goalie. Get yeah. a goalie. Anyway, so yeah, so they lose five four to Colorado. On to shiny Las Vegas. Hopefully they're not wearing their fucking brutal buckets on tuesday night but oh, i kind of i kind of hope they are a little bit but i don't know didn't they... didn't the leafs just demolish the la kings when they wore their chrome buckets i think so so yeah. maybe they yeah i'm oh. kind of hoping we see the buckets the, the crazy vegas buckets but uh anyway the boys are out there right now as we're doing this podcast it's jackie's birthday they're probably having dinner or drinks or they probably got some shit going down as we speak right now. Would you not think? And they're in Las Vegas right now. They're right on the strip, probably. Yeah, they're yeah, they're probably on the strip <laughs> somewhere. So they're probably could, just getting into one right now. Probably getting into one. A couple of them probably might have gone off the strip a little bit to some of those shady places along the wing there. Oh, I love that, man. I hope so. I don't you know. Gotta, you got to watch out. I mean, if I mean. If you're looking to get COVID, I, I think one of those places might be the place to go. Well, with these guys now, they're like all those guys out there partying. They're probably like, let's fucking have at it. We all just we all just had COVID. Let's go. Yeah, <laughs> let's but like go Bunting, it. Bunting hasn't had it. OK, well, get you stay home, Bunts, and we're fucking Oh, no, going. he ain't staying home. He's no, gonna be he like, fuck it. If I'm going to get COVID, this is the way to get it. Yeah, that's true. In dirty <laughs> Las Vegas. That's true. So I can only imagine what kind of shenanigans is going on in fucking Las Vegas, Nevada this evening for Wayne Campbell's birthday. So we'll see what happens. So Tuesday night, we'll see. We'll be back on Thursday. So that's all for tonight, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sticking around. Yeah. No, but we'll be back no, on they, Thursday. Leafs so- lose. Leafs lose 5-4. Uh, we could debate about the game, but I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. And they're 17 and one when leading after three. Yeah, I didn't. Or I didn't sorry, love, leading after two. After two, I didn't love the blowing lead. That's it. That's it. No, I, and a four-one lead, you really shouldn't blow. But there were a lot of factors in place. I thought Keith said it pretty good after the game. You know, I thought the refereeing was eh, not great. I'm not going to blame the refs, but I didn't think it was great. Okay, well, the calls that were made. So let's get to that quickly before we before we move on from this game. So we get uh, Big Dick Nick out here. Okay, what do you what do you what would you like to call him? Big Dick Nick, Thick Dick Nick. What 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 sounds good? Big Dick. (laughs) I like Nicholas Richie. Okay, well, I mean, we'll call him Big. I'll just call him Big D or Big (laughs) Big D, Big Dick Nick, whatever. Big Dick Nick. It just flows off the tongue. If it does, it it really does. Say it again. Say it again. It just sounds fun to say. Big Dick Nick. It just flows, right? Yeah, big dick so, Nick. <laughs> once once you say it, it's hard to not keep saying it. Yeah. So anyway. When you so say he, it really fast, it's just like one word. I know. It's big dick Nick. I know, right? <laughs> I know. So, look, he ends up let's just go here. What the fuck is he even doing on the ice with two minutes left to go in the game in a four-four game? What the fuck is he even doing on the ice at that point? I don't know. That some of those I know you probably because they were gassed. Keith was trying to roll four lines, but I mean, same, the fourth line got hemmed out there with minutes left, giving up, I think the tying goal. Yeah. Maybe yeah. the third goal. Yeah. One of those, but same Cl- thing. Clifford, Cl- Clifford, fourth, Clifford, Simmons, and Peeney. Yeah. <laughs> was that the fourth line last yes, night? Yeah, it was. So yeah, Peeney was, you know, what, what he's, Peeney doesn't get in there very much. So you can't, you can't expect too much, <laughs> too much from him. Right no he's well he's never been in a big game like that no exactly so, so he got caught out there and <laughs> he's not that big like he's not like big he's not big like nick he's just no. small he's a yeah. smaller he's a small he's, he's <laughs> smaller a smaller peeny. Peeny. <laughs> so he is a smaller peeny so that's all right you got he got caught out there he he's got, smaller peeny but he's got two big ones beside him 
Oh yeah, with monsters. Clifford and Simmons. <laughs> yeah, monsters. Sometimes monsters. you build. Sometimes you build a line like that, right? Like you don't have a big middle, but you got size on the side. Yeah, tiny peeny in the middle, but we got two <laughs> two big ones beside him. So I, I yeah, I get that. Two big hammers right beside the tiny peeny. But <laughs> hey, man, you know that's the way she goes sometimes. So you're right. They did. They got caught. Out there. You can't have double penetration with <laughs> no. that three. That's right. <laughs> minimum, bud. Minimum. Minimum. So yeah, like they got caught out, I think, on the time or on the fourth goal, the tying goal. But like I said, like seriously, Sheldon Keith, listen up, bud. What the fuck is Nick Ritchie doing on the ice with two and a half minutes left to go in a tied fucking game against the Colorado Avalanche? What am I am I, am I missing something here? Like, seriously. Like no okay, idea. No, rolling the on, lines and all that. Wait, I get that. But... He's on waivers two days ago. Fuck, man. So this For guy anybody changed... in the league to just take. So he Without giving up anything. So he, I, I'm not even like I'm the refs. Okay. I think some questionable calls in this game. Not this one. This was a penalty. <laughs> the, so Nick takes an interference penalty with two 30 left to go in the game. And Stupid I'm like, penalty oh, I, I'm like, that's it. That's all she fucking wrote for this one. I'm like, I, I couldn't believe that Colorado didn't score on that power play. Could not believe it, but they scored right after. I know. So it's kind of like, you know, they gained the momentum from the power play and just kept it going. No, I know. So anyway, I just couldn't believe that Richie was on the ice at that point in the, that late in the game. And he takes a stupid fucking penalty. So that, that killed any other good fucking thing he did in that game. The only thing I'm remembering in that game is that he was on the ice for that brutal fucking penalty at the end of the game. So back in the yeah. doghouse for Nick, sorry, bud, still brutal, cleared waivers, but no, you can't trust this guy. Like, you cannot fucking trust him. What if that was a fucking playoff game? He probably does that same fucking thing because he's dumb. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he really is. I don't know what he was thinking. It was stupid. There were two and a half minutes left. On the flip side, 20 seconds later, Nazem Kadri interferes with TJ Brody, and TJ okay. Brody gets taken off the ice for embellishment? Yeah, okay. Are you telling me TJ Brody embellishes? I don't, I, I don't think so. No, I've never, ever seen... Brody's not the type of fucking player that would... Embe- he didn't even see him... Not, ca- okay. He doesn't Kadri. even show... He doesn't show emotion 95% no, no. of the time. And this guy's out there, like, falling and flailing. Brody's not going to embellish. They did, should have been just Kadri on that play. They took them both. Couldn't believe it. Yeah. It was it Then it would have been four on four, though. I Yeah, okay. So yeah. It, it was like... Why? I don't know. Yeah. Nick Ritchie's was a penalty, but on the flip side, TJ Brody did not embellish. So that's right. That's how I saw it too. Anyway, so, anyway, if ands and brunts, that's right. So speaking of that, then bunting, look, <laughs> like he was, uh, bunting has a little, a little bite to him. eh? don't you think like he does? He's a little feisty bugger. He, how many scrums was he the initiator on last night in that Colorado game? Like how many scrums? He was like <laughs> almost every one. <laughs> almost every one. Almost every one. So it's just I love it. Like he never actually gets in a fight, but he's always in the middle of fucking everything. I just think it's hilarious. Bunting has a little. Well, he, he's right. He's not even really in the middle. He's right in the brunt. Really, is where he is. He's right in the brunt. Bunting is in the brunt. That, 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 <laughs> that's the only place he should be. That's the only. Place that's he where he belongs. Be. I guess so. I don't know. You want to mention anything else about? It? I just, I just think it's funny. Like that, I like it. I like the way he I, plays. Like he plays like a little. I got. Little... I got breaking news. Oh, breaking news just coming across my desk right now. Oh, Bob Saget, star of Full House, dead at the age of sixty-five. Oh, seriously? Are you serious, man? Yeah, it just came across here. Found dead in his Orlando hotel room. Cause of death not yet determined. More details to come. 65 not that old no not old at all well we'll wait and see what happens there well that puts a damper on things thanks a lot. <laughs> thanks but, rest uh, in peace bob second but let's uh let's move on yeah we're gonna yeah. you wanted to talk about marner and nylander yeah i do well quickly first like the second power play unit eh? like ever since we came back from the pause the first power play unit has not scored the second power play unit has scored three games in a row so, and I think that extends the power play streak to 10 games. They, their power play has scored in 10 straight games going back to before the pause. But in the last three games, the second unit has scored in every game. The first unit, not one sniff. So what do you think of that? Um, I think if you watch it, the second unit just, they're going back to basics, baby. Yeah. 
the first unit is doing that thing that they had trouble doing at the start of the year, trying to be too fancy. And you kind of know where it's going too. It's they're always trying to feed it to Matthews. Well, yeah. And, and I don't blame them. He's amazing. But the second unit, it's just shoot it on goal. Simmons in front. Like look, ramble. We were, we were on such a heater with tippins like we were on an all-time heater of tippins and now it's just dry as a bone <laughs> there we we've got nothing there's no sign of a tip in anywhere they might want to get back to that you want to score you want to get the first power play unit going again you put jt in front of the net and you just let her fucking rip and hope for the best that's my suggestion <laughs> amen but, amen uh, anyway so man like i'm hoping next week like we've fucking have a tip in to talk about because this is getting ridiculous yeah. we, we, but we do going. we do have a tip i know a we tip got from the what is it, it yeah a tip, tip in tip tip in tips stay tuned for that later the tits we're gonna get to the tits don't worry the about tits, that yeah tits of the week we're, that's coming just down the pipe here <laughs> right. <laughs> right so we may not have a tip in but we got a tip yeah that's right we got to fill the we got to get a tip in somewhere so uh yeah look man okay Nylander and Marner. Obviously, Nylander has been fucking ridiculous. I think, I think Matthews with the two goals last night passed him uh, for the team lead in points. I don't have it in front of me right this second, but specifically, um, All Star voting just ended. Okay, for the All Star game, and there was five Leafs nominated for the All Star game. Do you know who they were? Um, no, but can I guess? Yeah, go ahead. Austin Matthews. Yep. William Nylander. No. What? That's where I'm going here. Okay. John Tavares. Yep. Morgan Riley. Yes. Mitch Marner. Yep. Who is the fifth one? Oh, Nick Ritchie. (laughs) Jack Campbell. Jack Campbell. Right. Okay. Not Willie, eh? Matthews, Tavares, Riley, uh, Marner, and, and Jack Campbell. Which all, I can see that. Actually, no, I can't see that the fuck has mitch marner done this season to deserve a fucking all-star nominee has mitch played that great i don't really think so no he's kind of having an off year he has 21 points in 26 games six goals 15 assists neil has 35 points in 33 games a point a game player like i know mitch has missed some time here with uh getting hit by muzzin and shit and all like just he's weird season for mitch but six goals like, come on, man. You might want to start putting the puck in the net a little bit more, Mitchie boy. I know that's not his, you know, forte. He's like the playmaker and all that shit. But I just would like to see a little bit more from Mitch, especially. Or, or just get just have more assists. Well, fuck. And he's missed some games. So, so yeah, what he's, he only, he, he's only played 26 games, but he has 21 points. Okay. So almost a point a, a, point a game, but. And what's yeah, Nylander? almost what, Nylander's 35 and 35 points in 33 games. He is a point of game player. Yeah. Yeah. Over slightly better than that, but slightly so, better, but on pace for around 82 points. So look, I'm not going to get into comparing the contracts and all this shit. I just think that personally, especially this season, Nylander has been fucking incredible. One of the best Leafs, one of the best Leafs without a shadow of a fucking doubt. Marner. I would say no, he has not been one of the best leads, not in the top five even, in my personal opinion. No, he hasn't been his regular Mitch Marner. Now, he's had a weird start. Like he, It seems like he can never really get going. Something takes him out of the lineup, whether Fair. it's Muzzin running into him or getting COVID or whatever it is, he hasn't really got it going. So I don't, I'm not worried. Marner will get it going. I so hope so. Gets his groove going, he'll get it going. But has he done anything to deserve an all-star nomination? No, no not over William Nylander. Not, not over a, Nylander. Like, isn't the all-star game? I know the all-star game, there's a bunch of players who go on merit just on their name and their careers. He's not at that level. He's one of the guys who should be picked on his play this season. Agreed. And he hasn't, I mean, Kerfoot has more points than him. He's played more games, but Kerfoot has more points. Riley has more points. I don't know. He hasn't, he hasn't been a superstar on the Toronto Bay Leafs. No. Yeah. I just think it's absolutely ridiculous that Marner gets an all-star nomination and he might, he might not make the, he might not actually make the all-star team, but he gets a nomination over fucking Elander. I just think that's absolutely ridiculous. Like just getting snubbed Willie big time, Willie styles. And, uh, yeah, man. I mean, hypothetical because they're not going to the Olympics, but 
they would be gearing up to go to the Olympics in a month from now. You think Mitch Marner would have made that fucking Canadian team? Would you put him on it? Would you have put him on it based no. off his play this year? No, not unless you not unless you had a vision of how the team was going to be built and where he would fit in. But if I was going on just to play this year, there are plenty of Canadian players ahead of him. Yeah, plenty. I think so. Anyway, yeah. so but yeah, not you know, I'd like to see Mitch get back here after the COVID thing, get it healthy, get a stretch of games going, and get back to like some fucking special shit like this guy's capable of some special stuff right and uh yeah anyway so we'll he's, see yeah what, he's got that special sauce anything else on on marner neither like, like we're not going to go into contracts and shit like that like maybe another time we will as it gets closer to those contracts coming to we, an we end, have, but... we've talked enough about those contracts on this podcast but i know this season so far hands down william nylander's been the better player he in my opinion Austin Matthews will always be the best player on the team, but William Nylander next to Austin Matthews has been the best player on this team. I he's been better agree. than Tavares. He's been better than Riley. He's been better than Marner. He's, you know, I guess Jack Campbell. Yeah. Okay. Just the, not the goalies, not including not the goalies. the goalies. Yeah. It's will every night, man, every night, this guy's noticeable. Those days of like him taking five games off are gone. He yeah. ever since last season, like the second half of last season, into the Montreal series and into this season, it's just maybe he takes a night off here and there, but it it seems like every night he's he's got it going. And if he shows up big again in the playoffs, like I mean, we could be talking about this guy being like a gamer. Like when the games matter most, he's right. He's raising his level of play. So we'll see, and we'll see you know, when the playoffs come what happens. Uh, you know, it looks like whoever doesn't win that Atlantic division is playing one of the Florida teams. That looks like how it's going to be to me. So <laughs> that is 100%. Um, anyway, um, I don't know. What about, and just quickly, you mentioned Austin there being the best player on the team. Obviously I'm in he, clearly, I think he's one of the best Leafs ever. Uh, maybe the best Leafs ever. He's 10th in scoring or no, he's ninth. I think all time in Leafs scoring. He's about to pass. I forget. I don't know who's 10th. He's about to enter the top 10 all time franchise scoring. He's only been on the team for, for what? How many years now? Since 2016. Is it five years he's been on the team already? Five years. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that, he would have done three years at his entry level. And this is and the second he, year of his contract. This his, is, yeah. Second year. Second he's got three years. He's yeah. got three years left after this year, I believe. That's right. Yeah. Um, anyway, so that's not that long a time to be like he's 10 goals away from entering the top 10 in franchise history for goals like dude where is he going to be at the end of fucking like i don't know anyway it's just incredible i've got something else anything you want to add anything about matthews uh no no um i have the list in front of me so he's about to pass ted kennedy okay ted kennedy who is 10th who's 10th yeah the difference is ted kennedy 230 goals, 696 games. Awesome Matthews, 221 goals. So, so he he's, sits he's, at right now. He's so nine, he's nine, goals, yeah, nine yeah. goals off. He's played 364, almost half yeah, that's, as many games. That's wild, man. That's wild. There's nobody on the list. The only player close to him at a scoring pace on this list in the top 10 is Rick Vive. Who's who's number who's one? Who's number one? Matt Sundin. Oh, 400, Sundin. 420 goals. In 981 games, yeah, Austin's, Austin's gonna on smoke pace. That does, he'll if he plays 981 games, he'll like double. It won't, that. it won't even take him that. It won't even take him that. No, I'm oh. saying if he plays the same amount of games, Sunday oh, did, dude, yeah, 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 yeah. It won't even be close. So. Yeah, 100. Um, percent Okay, so quickly, I'm just gonna throw this out there. You tell me what your thoughts are on this. Okay, since the break, and I know that's a real short, that's a real small peeny there. Okay, real tiny. Three games, not a lot. Can we say Justin Hall better, Jake Muzzin worse? Is that a thing? No, that's not a thing. I don't know. Is also, it? it's Cini, not Peeny, but. Oh, I thought it was, what? An S? I thought it was a P. No. Oh, fuck. Okay, my bad. <laughs> well, we can just continue calling him Peeny. Okay. I thought it was just a joke before, but I okay. thought he was just a tiny. I thought he was just a tiny peeny. He is a tiny peeny, but it's a tiny oh. sini. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that just doesn't have the same ring to it. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> but anyway, okay, so what do you think? Hall has been better. Muzzin has not been as good. That's not a fair assessment, you don't think? In the past three games? Maybe. Yeah. Well, Muzzin, I don't think, played the first game. Yeah, no, I, I don't think. Yeah, the past well, okay. two games. That's what I'm speaking specifically. Yeah. Since the break. M- since the break. Okay, since the break, Hall's looked a little better than Muzzin. A little, uh, yeah, that, that's not crazy, right? That's not crazy, but Hall is not better than Muzzin. I don't know, man. No, he's not. He's not. But Muzzin, like, I don't know. I'm not really super stoked on Jake Muzzin. Man, you, yeah, but you you got to – a guy like Jake Muzzin, don't don't live in the – don't live in this small sample of, like, five to ten games. No, I don't – I haven't been super impressed with Jake this season, to be honest. No, he's, like, not, ha- he's not having a great season, but I would still rather Jake Muzzin over Justin Hall if I had to pick one. Okay, fair. And look, and we – we can get into this on the next podcast. We'll do after the Vegas game and the Arizona game, we'll be back on a Thursday night or probably midweek. And, and we'll, we can get into this then maybe, but man, I, I really would like to see this team bolster that top four. Like I think the the correct move to do is to bring in a fairly decent d- defenseman. I, I don't know. Like, I don't know if they're going to be able to cap wise. Um, so I get I even so, so Richie cleared waivers. So that does open up the cap space, right? Because technically, or if he's playing, it doesn't. Um, like if, if he's I, on the if he's on the taxi squad, it does. But if he's in the lineup, it doesn't. Yeah, I, I don't know all the ins and outs of the taxi squad and the salary cap. But when okay. he's on the taxi squad, it frees it, up. It frees up a million and change. Right. But if he's in the lineup and playing, it might not. That, that's but the only reason he's in the lineup is because someone's not. That's right. So okay. I so, guess it kind of balances balances itself out. Okay. So anyway. All right. Anyway. anyway. I got nothing else, man. Other no, than let's the let's let's take a break. Um, have a word from our sponsor, and when we get back, we're gonna do hot in the slot to hit the showers, and we also got a we also got a tip for you, a tip in tip tip in tips. So you're listening to the tip in Maple Leafs podcast. The Tip In Maple Leafs podcast is brought to you by General Mills Bugles. What are bugles? Well, they're a cone-shaped corn chip that tastes awful. Looking to unimpress all your guests by putting out a bowl of food that tastes like shit? Then you need General Mills Bugles. Pick them up today at your local grocery store. Mmm, bugles. All right, welcome back to the Tip in Maple Leafs podcast. So, what do you want to do first? You want to we're going to get into a couple segments. Do you want to give the listeners a tip, or do you no, want to do some hot in the slot? Let's do hot in the slot first. Let's hit it. Hot in the slot or hit the showers. He's so hot right now. Oh, right, god damn it! Let's hit the showers. God damn it! All right. So the way we've been doing it lately is we've been doing the showers first. Yeah. And saving who's hot in the slot. I think we should continue that. Yeah, you want to continue that? Yeah, I like it. You get soaked okay. up, and then you okay. get out there. Okay, okay. You want to go first this time? Sure. Oh, you, you start. Want... Yeah, you start it off. All right, this guy right here <laughs> he cleared waivers this week. <laughs> Call him by his real by his nickname if you're going to cleared do it. waivers this week. Got back into a game, had to make a big impact in this Colorado game. Best game of the year so far, playing against the high flying abs. He gets a goal. He gets a goal on the power play. Now he had a wide open net. I could have scored that goal, but he still, he got the goal. But then with two minutes left, for no reason at all, he takes a stupid interference penalty when the Leafs are only up by a goal and just basically bought himself right back to the taxi squad no matter what. Dude, no matter game, what, dude, the game was tied at that time. They weren't still up four three. It was four four. When oh, he was it? That. I thought it was four yeah. three. No. Oh, that's that's even worse. I know. That's even worse. Okay. So anyway, big Nick Rick, big big Nick Nick, big Nick Rick. <laughs> you you botched the nickname, but close enough. I what know is what it? Meant. Big Dick Nick or Thick Dick Nick, whatever you want okay. to call it. Thick, <laughs> thick, thick, thick Dick Nick, because he's got it because he's thick in the head. That's, yeah, that's that makes more sense. That makes I like that. Better. Yeah, thick dick, thick yeah. dick, Nick. <laughs> yes, that's right. So he's hitting the shower. So you better. Oh. Tell- okay, so he's right. Cleared waivers. 
gets a goal, takes the fucking dumb penalty. Now he's in the showers. <laughs> He's not even showering with Eddie Bell for him with the team. This no, thick dick he's, is showering somewhere else. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Showering with the taxi squad. They might have left him in Colorado last night. I don't know. <laughs> he just <laughs> took off without him. <laughs> we'll just leave you here. We'll see what happens. So, yeah, yeah I cannot disagree with that, man. Hey, um, excuse me. That. Do you have a, a plane ticket for your thick dick? Because <laughs> I got my bags packed, but I can't find my team. <laughs> Yeah, oh. that's a good. I, I like that. That's a good sorry, call. Mr. Thick Dick, but they're gone. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be honest. I contemplated that, but I thought, no, nah, fuck. I'll just let it be. But I'm. I, it's. It's the right call. It is the right decision. I totally had to agree. Had, totally they've been playing agree. so well. Agree. Right? There's not too many people you could throw to the showers, but that penalty last night was awful. I am gonna throw someone else in there with. I can't now, wait for this. I can't wait for this. I think I know. I think we were just talking about him. But. I don't know, man. It's not as, no, it's not as exciting as yours, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to call this guy into the room and I'm going to say, listen, bud, I got someone waiting in the shower for you. I want you to go in there, pay him a little visit. I'm talking about Travis Dermott. Oh, Travis Dermott has not I have not liked his game recently. I'll tell you what, especially last night, Colorado. The least did a good job for part of that first half of that game. Like Dermot was given the puck, turning it over left and fucking right. I thought he was by far, well, a tie. Muzzin would have been my second pick, but I'm going with Dermot. And I'll tell you what, I want to fuck, we better see in Las Vegas tomorrow night or Tuesday night, whatever fucking day it is. I cannot keep track of days anymore. I don't know what's going on, but we better see in the lineup. In Las Vegas, Magnum P.I. better be back in the fucking lineup. Till Timothy Lilligren, Sandine, and I thought Sandine had a pretty decent game, but I want to see Sandine back with Lilligren. I just, too. Enough of this Dermot shit. Get the right pairing for the five and six guys. Dermot, Belfour's in the shower, waiting. Get in there, bud. Don't worry about a towel. <laughs> Not needed. Not just, necessary. Just get on her. Get in there. So I don't know. What do you think of that? Is that a little off no, base no, that's, maybe? Or? No, no, it's good. Dermot, sometimes you just, sometimes you need a little shower. Yeah. It's Hilton, just something you need. He's got a little something. Eddie Belfort's got a little something special waiting All right. for you in there, Derms. <laughs> do, you want, do you want me to go? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take, yeah, you go ahead. You might steal my guy, but you go ahead. Okay. If you, if you, if you say who I was going to say, then I'll just give an honorable mention to a couple other guys and we'll just go with the same guy. All right. Okay. This week, my hot in the slot. I don't think I've ever picked this guy for hot. Okay. In the slot. Same guy. Same guy. I already know it's the same guy who I was going to pick 100%. Right. And he's never been picked. This is a first time. We got a first time I, happening right now. Are you going Kerfoot? 100%. Yeah. I'm going Alex Kerfoot. Let me just give you one stat here. Last season, 56 games, 23 points for Alex Kerfoot. This season, 33 games. 24 points already he's already surpassed last season that's crazy and the so just the last three games since the pause two goals six assists yeah. for alex alex kerfoot yeah like, i was yeah. just gonna say that and last night he's been great he has been great one goal to assist he was unbelievable i don't talk shit about kerfoot a lot but i do bring up his contract very often on this podcast because i don't like his contract i just don't like 3.5 million price tag there but if it was 2.5, maybe I could be a little more whatever. If he plays but, like this, it's not, I know, not but a you, big they, deal. They have to find money somewhere. McKayef needs a contract. Cache, Campbell. Like, what the fuck are they going to do here? So does Lilligren and Sandine. Like, those will be small contracts. But where yeah. are they going to find this fucking money from? I don't know. They got uh, it. They'll, they'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. There'll be another season of... Filling out the roster with minimum contracts. Does one of the big boys eventually have to go? And we all know who it would have to be because. Well, Nick Ritchie's got to go. No, I know. But, you know, I don't know. Dubas has got his work cut out for him this offseason to try to get some of these guys yeah. to, to stick around. But, we'll see. Uh, but anyway, point yeah, is, Kurt, hot Kerfoot. in the slot hit the showers. Alex Kerfoot, you're getting. First time two, ever. Too hot in the slot. Yes, yeah, first time ever. Now let's do a uh, couple honorable mentions. My second choice would have been TJ Brody. My second choice would have been number 78, TJ Brody. Dude, we are thinking alike here. Yeah. Two, two birds. I honestly, I have. <laughs> like that. What's the That's saying? not the saying. No, two what birds. is this? <laughs> what, 
that's what I'm saying. Well, it, like your thing kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> But I don't think that's thinking alike. No, no but on the same say, wavelength. No, dude, you and I, that's what it is. Kill two birds with one stone. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I think Belfort taught us that one. When we had a real bad week and we were in the showers, both of us with Belfort, I'm pretty oh. sure he taught us how to kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> he did. He did. I don't even know what that means. He, he showed, he, well, he just told us all, he told us a lot of stories about killing two birds with one stone. That's right. That's right. And then he oh. pulled out the big bird, <laughs> the, the big eagle, yeah. <laughs> and, and, a, a, and a stone. <laughs> took, it, took it in a completely different direction. Once he pulled out the big yeah. bird. <laughs> that was it. That was oh, it. what a shower that any, was. Any other, <laughs> any other honorable mentions? <laughs> Brody and McKayev too, eh? Like McKayev, not so great last night, like. It sucks that Cache is kind of banged up, whatever. He's on the trip, but dude, uh, it sucks that they moved Mikhaev up. I get it because he had played so well in the two previous games, but Mikhaev and Kerfoot, or sorry, Mikhaev and Camp and Cache played so well. I just want to see those three guys. I think they're all fitted perfectly on that third line. That's where they should all be. They moved him up, and I just didn't love his game as much last night in the Colorado game, but two previous games lights out. So honorable mention. Brody, it's what it's one of the few teams McKayev will play against where his speed doesn't stand out. Yeah, it like didn't crazy. last night. It didn't last night because Colorado flies. Yeah, when he plays like other teams, he's going to be really noticeable as we've seen. But yeah, yeah. McKayev, Brody, honorable mentions, Kerfoot, hot in the slot. Congratulations, little Kerfy. You got your first one. You're hot, baby. So hot. All right. For our last segment of the night, Dale has... I don't have any tips this week. I sure as hell do. I got no tips. But like we said, we did this, uh, I think, last week. When there's no tip-ins, we're going to have a tit for you. Or tits. It's either one tit or multiple tits. We don't know. But anyway, a tit is a tip-in tip. Where we give you life advice. Doesn't have to be about hockey. Doesn't have to be about anything specific just a tip that you can think about for the rest of the day and maybe even put it in your back pocket use it again for life advice like the time eddie belfour whipped out his bird and stone in the shower that's right that's it right. gave us something to think about forever and that's what a tit is let's hit the music let's get to the tits here it is the tits tits i mean tips and now for the Porn. So first I want to lay down on the counter and what's going to happen is I want to take just a moment and I want to make myself nice and wet and you know what else? I always like to use that wonderful porn. Oh gosh, look at that. Mm. I love that. Delicious. I can go all the way to the bottom and not make a mess of my nice pretty pink. Whoop. Ooh, but you know what? Now it's taste time. Tits. I mean, tips. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. Last night's game got me thinking, pondering about a thing or two. Now, let me tell you a little thing or two about a thing or two. I got a sweet tip for you this week. This goes out to uh, the lease organization and anybody just in general who wants to keep things on track, keep things going in the right direction, not stray too far from where your, your goal is here, okay? So here's the tip, Chad. Here is the tip in tip of the week, okay? It's a mouthful. It That's is, it said. is, it is. Oh, yes. Here it is, ready? I'm ready. Don't blow loads of leads. Do not blow loads of leads. Get where okay. I'm going there? Get where I'm going there? So what you're saying is don't blow loads of leads. That's that's the tip. That's okay. the tip this week. I mean, that's a direct result of, of the Colorado game because what happened there? What if it's a small load of leads? Okay. Or is it just no load? No, no. Four one turns to four two. That's a small. That's a small load. Okay. Small when it, lead. <laughs> yeah, that's blowing a. Yeah, that's, that's a, you blew a small load of a lead. 
Yes, that if it goes to four two, I'm okay with that. Yeah, no problem. Small one, no problem. Four three, four four. Ultimately, you blow the whole damn fucking thing. It's too much. <laughs> it's way too much. But they haven't done that a lot. They have not done that. This no, they year. Ha- they hadn't done it once. No. Well, they've not. They've blown little. They've blown little loads. Right, but it's, they have. They haven't. <laughs> they haven't blown, blown a giant loads. They haven't blown. That's right. They haven't. They haven't blown like big loads of leads. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I can handle a little. But sometimes, one. sometimes, it, when you go seventeen and zero without blowing a lead, it builds. Okay. Right? Yeah. There's it, tension there. I get it. It builds and builds and builds, it's and eventually, tight. Tight. eventually, you're gonna run into someone who makes you blow a load of leads. Okay. Okay. Right? Fair. And and that's why. But that's why I'm saying the tip is, don't blow loads of leads. Don't 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 keep doing it. <laughs> don't keep doing it. <laughs> that sounds kind of like a tip where. You know, if you were, if I was playing on the Leafs and you were to tell me that, I'd be like, okay, okay, great, thanks. How? Like you're not, you're just telling us not to do it. Yeah, don't do it. Just don't do it. Don't let, don't let them back. Don't let them back in. Like I said, four one goes to four two. That's okay. You got to stop there. Yeah. You got to stop right there. So that's that's it. Just do not blow load. But when you me. see that's it, when you see the preload coming a little bit, just. Hold it off. Stop it. Cup stop it. it. Cap it. <laughs> Just stop it. Yeah. Put a cork in it. You got to plug that right up. <laughs> That's it. That's it. So, okay. you know, that, just look, it happened once. No big deal. Happens to all of us. Hey, happens to the best of us. No big deal. No big deal. But just so just to reiterate, let's just not make a thing of this. Okay. Don't going forward. Don't blow loads of leads. That's the tip this week. That is the tits. <laughs> that is the tits. I like it. I like it. And now you give something for people to think about all day. There you go. They will not. People will walk around being like, you know what? I'm not going to blow any more loads of leads anymore. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. So not only did we help the least, we helped people. We're killing two birds with one stone. There you go. There you go. Like Love we that. always do. There you go. All right. Anything else you got? Uh, I do have one other thing. Non-Leafs, non-leafs related. All right. Throw it in. But uh, speaking of loads, <laughs> Jesus, man. There's some, I don't know where I came across this, but this is a very interesting development. There's some fucking airline or flight company. I don't know if it's in the States or not. Did you see this? Did you see this? You know where well, I'm going I don't this? No, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, there's some airline. I'm not sure if it's in the States. It, it might be Europe because they're a little, I don't know. Maybe they're a little more into this shit in Europe, but it might be in the States. But there's some airline that is offering flights to nowhere so people can fuck. So people can just fuck. <laughs> I did see this. I did see this. It's a $1,000 mile high flight. So it's just like, dude, like, you know, mo- you know, most people, normal people would just like go to a hotel room or like fuck in the bedroom. It's or actually, a it's a Las Vegas company. Oh, Hello, okay. Maple okay. Leafs. That, oh, Jesus, happy birthday, buds. Holy smokes. The company is offering... Can you imagine the ja- like the girlfriend shows up. She's got the plane on the on the tarmac, ready One, to go. The tickets are a thousand dollars, and the flight it it goes nowhere. It just flies around. You get satin sheets, um, mo- like removable sex position pillows, <sighs> and the pilots are provided noise canceling headphones. Is it a thousand a thousand per person? Like what if you load thousand that per fucker? person? So what if you load that fucker right up? You can. Well, what's, it, the, what's the maximum capacity? Does it say that? Like, you're. Are we talking full on double penetration here, or more? Uh, it Probably, doesn't. Probably, right? <laughs> oh, I, I guess what the name. Guess what the name of the airline. Oh, is. I can't wait! I can't wait! I can't wait. <laughs> this is this is going to be the title of the podcast. I can't wait! I can't wait to hear it. I cannot wait. Love Cloud. Oh yeah. 
love cloud i love that i love that love i love that cloud. that that yeah that okay that that's great that is oh great. and for um you get a foam mattress as well so that you have like a little bedroom on the plane man you know what that's cool i guess but I hope they have a good fucking cleaning staff in, in, uh, employed because this, I would not want to be. I, can you, can you imagine seeing that plane landing, like, and the people get off and you've got it booked next? You're waiting for the next, <laughs> you're waiting to get on. Holy fuck, you're, you're uh, walking into a sticky situation there. The talk, co- about, talk about blowing leads or blowing <laughs> co owner, blowing loads. The co-owner, Anthony Blake, said almost every single flight ends with complete happiness. I'm sorry. What was his name? Anthony Blake. Tony. (laughs) Fuck. Tony. It's Tony Danza playing the part of Tony Blake. He's the co-owner. of. Oh, my God. He's the pilot, too. Co-owner and pilot of Love Cloud. That's sick, motherfucker, man. He also said people are saying that they've had the best sex of their lives. And weeks later, they're still talking about it. And he said, on average, we see a lot of proposals, um, love stories, couples, as well as quite a few <laughs> bangers, <laughs> Real sex good. and swingers renting the plane. Real good bangers. I love that. Oh, oh, oh it's a tiny plane. It's super small. Okay. Yeah. So there's no, would... there's no seats. It's just the one bed. Right. Okay. You get 45 minutes. Oh, 45 minutes. So that's not that long a time, really. 45 so they, minutes, 45 minutes for a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars for 90 minutes. Jesus. Okay, well, there you go. So hey, listen to this, man. Uh, so just before we go, anyone who listened to the last podcast, uh, we mentioned the uh Love Cloud. Yeah, well, I love cloud. I love that. Uh we mentioned the former reality TV star turned TikTok celebrity. Uh, I still don't know this chick's name. Oh, Stephanie Matto is her fucking name, actually. If anyone wants to give that a little Google search. And uh, we mentioned the whole fart in the jar thing, cup in the jars, led to Al's brother's scenario and all that shit. But so I found out the price tag of one of these jars. Did you see what it was? Per jar, we're talking here. No, you know? I didn't. What was it? And and the show was ninety day fiance. We didn't say that last time, but that's what you. Oh, I d- I thought I did say that. No, you said um the Bachelorette. Oh, that's right. Okay, that's right. Ninety day fiance. Okay. So, anyway, thirteen hundred dollars a jar. Thirteen hundred thirteen hundo a jar. So. Not yeah, bad. Man. Not bad. Not, no, not bad. And now people. So she could sell one jar and then almost have 90 minutes in a love cloud. Yeah. And now people, people listening to this won't see this, but you can see it right now. What I'm about to show you and anybody that's watching this on YouTube can, will be able to see it. Now, this is her with the jars. <laughs> that is what that is a picture of. Can you see that? Jared? Yeah, I have the same picture. Oh, yeah. Computer, yeah. Okay, there you go. So she's you know. got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight jars. Eight jars. That's a lot. Yeah, it looks like she puts something else in there with them. I can't tell what that is. She a, puts a rose. That's well, weird. she also sends a USB drive with the fart jar with video, video of her farting into the jar. So you have proof that it's real. Interesting. Anyway, okay. anyway, for the Tip in Maple Leafs podcast, don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at the Tip in Maple Leafs podcast. Email us at the Tip in podcast at gmail.com. Check out our YouTube page at the Tip in Maple Leafs podcast. Hit like and subscribe if you like what you're uh, listening to. You can go to our Patreon page and donate as little as a cup of coffee. That's patreon.com backslash the Tip in podcast. You can also buy us a ticket on Love Cloud. All right. We will take tickets on Love Cloud. Apparently, it comes with a stewardess if you're all alone. So there you go, Dale. You just buy a ticket for yourself, and you have a stewardess already there waiting for you. Enticing. (laughs) Anyway, until uh, until Thursday, we will. Hey, baby, go into Vegas. Go into Arizona. Let's get a couple wins here. Get things back on track. We'll see Brian on Wednesday. Yes, that's right. Do not blow loads of leads, but I tell you who might be blowing a load right now. Happy birthday, Jackie boy. He's probably up on the love cloud right now. We will catch you later. Catch you later, everybody.